ancient art that still astounds. Travel all the way to China to make fireworks the old-fashioned way. Another explosive show here on Daily Planet. Hey, look at who said Daily Planet doesn't create fireworks every week. Look at this. This is an incredibly expensive fireworks show that we we're are demonstrating. We're so big budget. <laughs> <laughs> Enormous budget, in fact. Do you know why we're doing this? Tomorrow marks the start of the Asian Games, second largest sporting event in the world after the Olympics. This year they're in Guangzhou, China. And just like the Olympics, the opening ceremonies will be almost as huge a celebration as this. They're going to include a fireworks extravaganza from the same company that wowed the world during the Beijing Games in 2008. And I'm sure that they're going to be a little bit better than ours. Daily Planet was treated to a first-hand look at how these aerial wonders are still handmade in a rather unlikely location in China's Hunan province. Pan Jiabin is engineer general at Panda Fireworks, one of the biggest fireworks companies in the world. He starts work at 3 in the morning because days like today, he can't work past mid-morning. We can't work in temperatures above 32 degrees Celsius if there are explosives involved. No cars are allowed on site, and along the way, there are grounding poles to remove any static he might be gathering. Fireworks for the opening ceremonies of the Beijing Olympics were made here. Today they're working on a brand new project, the Asian Games. Pan starts his day by taking stock of the raw materials. The most commonly used material in fireworks making is potassium perchlorate. It's widely used to produce fire and smoke. He checks to make sure nothing's missing or spontaneously combusted. We have strict rules in terms of chemical storage. We put different types of chemicals into different warehouses. Looking around, it's hard to believe this is where some of the world's biggest spectacles are created. One characteristic of the fireworks factory is that we're small scale and scattered. Around the factory, there's an explosion resistant wall. In the production facility, there are static resistant rubber mats on the tables. Throughout the factory, there are water reservoirs, especially important for those handling the raw explosive materials. The most dangerous procedure is the powder making because explosives are involved and they're in direct contact with people. In all the other steps, people and explosives are in indirect contact, separated by papers, therefore they're relatively safer. The powders are weighed by hand using ancient non-metallic tools, so if they're dropped, they don't cause sparks. When in the production facility, we require one person only in each room if explosives are present. We also control the amount of explosives, for example, five kilograms in one room. Workers have to finish and transfer out five kilograms of product before they can take the next batch. The powders are trundled away and turned into pellets so that color can then be added. Strontium carbonate is for red light, barium nitrate for green light, and copper oxide for blue light. By combining these oxidants, colorants, and some combustible chemicals such as alloy and sulfur, all kinds of colors can be produced during combustion. Every single ball can be designed to change color in the air. For instance, for a firework changing color from red to green to blue, we first make a blue core and wait till it's dry. Then we make a green core and wrap it with a layer of green powder and then a layer of red powder. When the fireworks shell is launched, it changes from red to green and then to blue. Next, the pellets are packed into shells the same way they've been for centuries, by hand. The stars used inside the big balls are for some special effects. When the fireworks shell bursts, another layer of small shells burst out. Ten, twenty, thirty, any number of balls can be packed in to make different shapes. The most complex firework I have ever made is the eight-layer chrysanthemum, as the Japanese call it. 
Inside the big shell, there are three, four, or at most five layers of flower cores. Shells are taped over and over and over again to strengthen and seal them. For more than a thousand years, more than 95 percent of the fireworks have been manually produced. It's very rare that they are produced by machines. The main reason is that fireworks is a high hazard industry, and many of the processes can't be in contact with irons to prevent dangers. So we've been using manual operations. Taping is one of the few areas that is becoming modernized. Once taped, they add time delay fuses of different lengths to stagger explosions in the air. The lines are measurements. Every red one is a second. Then launching explosives and lighting fuses are added. And voila, a completed firework. Tonight, engineers are setting up a test to check progress on the show design for the Asian Games. And CEO Wei Ping Zhao has come out to observe. He says designing a fireworks extravaganza is like staging a runway show or directing a movie. So we must put different items, different effects put together. When you put there, why you put there. So what do you want to get? You want to let people to see the color or you want to let people hear the sound. Tonight, Zhao and his team are looking for three things. Ah. Quality we will see stable or uh, lifting from a uh, motor to the air. The height is good or not. Then uh, the, the speed of the Stop launching. And also the color, what we design. Fireworks may be a centuries old invention, but it's launching itself into 21st century innovation, becoming cleaner and smarter. For one show, more than 50%, or most of smoke from the launching powder. So if we use an uh, 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 air launcher, so then we'll be uh, smokeless. If we use chip fireworks, we can have a, uh, have a very special ship in the air because we can control the, the height and uh, the timing, uh, control very well. It's not hard to be taken in by the pageantry. The Jawa hopes people will experience more than just booming noise and bright lights. We like to do something people can remember for a long time. I have been to London a few times for 2012, also Olympic. So we, we discussed a lot about this kind of thing. You see uh, the beautiful fireworks. So you should see the beautiful history, all the beautiful culture. Idea. You know why it's a good idea? Because everybody thinks and talks and wonders about the weather. And so now they can just look at a little machine and... Because quite often you don't want to experience the weather. <laughs> That's why it's better to the have safety virtual weather. Out. So you can say, oh look, in Omaha, it's horrible. <laughs> That's it so for the show today me. though. Tomorrow we're going to do all kinds of stuff. You'll just have to tune in to see what it is. Bye bye. Good night.